Well, my name's Matt Cupel. I'm the founder of Pitch Six. I'm here with Charlie Schreibner. We're gonna go over, Charlie has one a routine inside the Forceboard app, and we're gonna go over that today and talk a little bit about it. All right, so let's start with you, Charlie. Can you introduce yourself? My name's Charlie Schreiber. I live in New Jersey with my wife, Sam now Schreiber. Very strange saying that. I've been rock climbing for 17 years. I started here in Jersey at a gym up north, and I've traveled around working at different gyms, coaching for different teams, always coaching independently with private coaching and uh, one-on-one settings, little group settings, and writing programming for anyone that's motivated and, and needs guidance or, or mentorship in how to get better at climbing. All right, and then your training background. I know you have a your you've got some certifications behind you as well. Yeah, I uh, about five years ago decided to really further educate the physiological understanding of the human body and the effects that training has, and how we can better use all of the training tools that other sports have really figured out, and that science has actually used to to prove better results. And uh, so I got my CSCS, which is a certification. I'm sorry, I became a, it's always hard to say, uh, I became a certified strength and conditioning specialist. So my initials are now CS, CF, CF. That was the real oh, yeah, just if, if we're being honest here. Add, add three duplicate initials, that's funny. We put in the routine inside the Force Board app. There is a three-second peak force pulls uh, routine that is that you came, you designed and we we stuck in there and got your picture attached to it. Tell us a little bit about what that is. So the the three minute three second three minute that'd be crazy <laughs> three second uh, peak force pull is a maximal effort so a maximum strength stimulus to the body in order to alert the system that. Uh, you would like more muscle fibers in the actual location of your uh, forearm, in this case, to fire in coordination with the others, and that you would like for those fibers to be pulling a little bit harder. So it's mainly a neurological stimulus uh, due to the brevity of the exercise. Over the longer term, uh, you can get noticeable uh, physiological adaptation, but mainly what you're doing this exercise for is to get a, a peak in a shorter amount of time in your force production uh, through whatever grip that you're training. And you can apply it to any exercise. I've actually been applying it to my uh, mid-thigh deadlift pull. Yeah, you've got some good. crazy numbers on that. You're, you were uh, pushing the limits of some of our gear with your mid-thigh pull, so good job. Thank you. Yeah, I love that um, exercise. The, the real yeah, engine rubber. You get the whole set yeah, of sure. and fired up. I actually started doing some, a lot of mid-thigh pulls during my climbing warm-ups on days when I'm going to go out and I don't have a ton of time just to get all the neurological systems firing. I think it's a great exercise. Absolutely. Um, uh, oh, I guess I should say three-second peak force pull. This is exactly what we do on, on our assessment tests inside the force board. It is a three-second pull for exactly the same reasons you're talking about. It's a really short duration pull. You can just pull as hard as you can. You can't sustain your peak force for more than that. And all the tests, we've gone around the country to a lot of different gyms and all the, we do three-second pulls there as well. And it's interesting to see how well people can do a pull. You know, some people know how, some people don't. So it's a good thing to practice. The driving factor, and the reason I believe that this is a little bit more effective than longer duration pulls, if you're looking to go on a trip or looking to perform in the next four to six weeks, is that by only pulling for three seconds, you're ensuring that you are hitting your maximal force and then not further fatiguing the system. So if you were to look at your session and look at your high quality strength ability throughout that session, how many seconds would you be able to pull above 90% of your max, which is where you're really training that upper end maximal strength. If you are doing a lot of volume in, in pull time, then that's going to take away from your potential energy for the session. So by limiting the, the time that you're doing these pulls for, you're ensuring that you can do more high quality practice. So with these pulls, if you were to do a 10 second pull where you aim for this maximal force and then continue going for seven more seconds and you'll see on the chart that your force will 
drop. Uh, now you're taking those seven seconds where you're still exerting force and spending energy, and you're taking it away from future pulls where you could be sending more high quality signals to the brain saying, I'd like for you to fire at over 90% full energy. It's like mm -hmm. when you are projecting outside on your boulder and you're trying to go for the send and you keep giving it bottom attempts. And then when you finally learn the top sequence, you're too tired to do it. And that's why a lot of professional climbers will break it up into parts so that they're not adding excessive fatigue in the form of a pump so that they can give more high quality attempts to really learn this boulder efficiently. The, you're going after neurological adaptations. You can, those, you can make those adaptations relatively in a relative short period of time. So I'm going on a bouldering trip. I'm going to have to have a lot of recruitment, a lot of force generation on this bouldering trip because I want to send my first V10 or whatever it is. Uh, I can get strong. If I really want to get strong for a bouldering application, I'd go after this peak force routine. Yes, it can certainly help on sport climbs if you have a, a very high power move. It mm -hmm. would absolutely be applicable for anybody that is, um, you know, a purely, you know, type one muscle fiber, slow moving, slow to activate sport climber that's struggling on a very uh, quick pull or uh, yeah. a move on their on their long sport route that requires maximal strength. Um, yeah. I think that one of the biggest gains that I've noticed in myself and other people that I've given this uh, protocol to is that you're constantly telling your mind to pull as hard as you can, everything firing. And it gives you the opportunity to go all out because you know you're only going to be doing that for three seconds. So mm -hmm. I've always felt that it really activates that super try hard moment mm -hmm. on a boulder where you need to summon everything. And yeah. again, if you're doing it more often, so you say you're doing five reps of this rather than three reps of a 10 second where you're yeah. mostly passive, then, then yeah, I, I think it has a uh, large benefits in both regards. Yeah. I mean, I think your overall climbing, if you think of, I will also come in, I've, I've tested a lot of people on peak force tests. Cause I said, we're going around the country at gyms. It's really interesting to see those people. And it's often the, the hard boulders that know how to do it. Those people that really know how to recruit right off the bat and they'll hit a high force within a half a second. And then they're trying so hard, they taper off. And a lot of other folks just don't know, like they're trying and they think they're trying hard and you get, you suggest or yell at them a little bit and suddenly they go up in numbers like they're eight seconds into the rep and they go up and like that's they just don't know how to pull so this is a good right. test to teach you how to pull exactly and exactly. knowing yeah. when to pull and, and being able to pull on demand is super important so let's get into the specifics of what grip types would you use and and how many reps would you do Generally, maximal strength uh, will start to taper off for most uh, individuals, depending on how trained you are, of course, uh, with, within about five sets. Uh, because it is so taxing on the body, and it, it really should be a very high quality exercise that once you recognize uh, a lack of potential in your very top peak power and strength, that you should stop because you will actually undo the gains that you could be making. And that also goes for the session afterwards. You should really stop this type of a session when you've noticed that total power is dropping and you're climbing afterwards if you'd like to do so. But you could alter the grip uh, as long as there's not a lot of crossover. Say you're doing you know, half crimp, uh, you might not want to then do chisel or high angle because it's, it's very close crossover with the joint angle. But maybe doing an open hand set, either pocket or three fingers and then doing a half crimp set and then maybe even doing a smaller edge on a full crimp as long as your joints feel good would be good but uh, with all of these it's very high intensity and you should only do this in a grip type that you have experience uh, ample experience climbing in and you, it should be something that you have uh, significant experience in with training independently like on a board or a, okay. a device like this so you don't, if you, if you'd never really use the full crimp, you don't want to just go bounce into maximum effort pulls on a full crimp, like build into it. I'm going to pull up the app and there is a pretty good description inside there. So we said it's, oh, it's, it's one hold, one set per hold and then five reps. So you're really, you're picking a grip type and doing five reps. Yeah. A more trained athlete could certainly do 
several grip types. But like I said, it it is a lot on the forearm, the fingers, and your central nervous system that you probably won't be able to benefit past a, a very low volume tolerance. Yeah. So this is, our, and I think we designed 120 seconds. So two minutes rest in between each pole, three second pulls, and maybe five pulls on a particular grip. And and perhaps for a, a well-trained athlete that's got some good capacity built up, you could maybe do one to perhaps three different holds, do you think? Or would you not want to go that high? You could, as long as there's, like I said, not a lot of crossover. So yeah. that you just don't want to do, you wouldn't want to overload an individual finger that may be, uh, you know, in this, at the same exact joint angle, pulling in the same exact yeah. way. So yeah. like, if you know, you're doing um, an easy one is you're doing three finger drag pulls, and then you switch to doing uh, two finger open hand pockets. Both of these knuckles, maybe the PIP joint might be flexed at the same angle. So you might be double tapping something that, you know, should not be receiving yeah. that much volume okay. at, at this level of intensity. Yeah, I should definitely preface by saying that. Yeah, because you could absolutely pull as hard as you can to half crimp three to five sets and then go climb at a lower intensity until you feel that strength decrease. Okay. When would you do this? What, you know, what time of day? How often per week? And maybe a macro cycle question too. When over your training cycle would you do it? This should be something that is limited to about a, a four to I'd say maximal uh, nine week period. But uh, you should always, if you're going to do this for more than four weeks, add a period of rest in the middle of at least one week, sometimes two. And you should only ever do this when two things, you know that you are completely recovered and well rested and operating on all cylinders from the last session. So having a very good recovery window between the previous session and this session you're about to do. And then same thing going forward. You wouldn't want to do this and then continue training that later that session or that next day if you know that that session is also going to be high maximal strength. So this session does require for maximal efficiency and effectiveness to be in a very well rested recovered highly strong state and then with a nice recovery and adaptation window afterwards ideally if you're prepping for a trip you'd want to underdo it because you don't want to continuously have to solely recover from the session you know, you, right. you enter at this type of at whatever your potential is for strength when you train you knock yourself down below that line and then recovery is when you get back to the line but adaptation is when you go back above the line so if you're trying to peak for a trip, you always want to make sure that you are going, coming down and then returning up before the next session. So if I've got a, a bouldering trip, my two months in my future, then how, how many times a week would I, you know, if, if I'm two months ahead, when would I do this over that two month cycle? If you've got two months, so that is about eight weeks, could be nine. So you'll have twice a week is the maximum I, I would ever suggest doing this. So, you know, one maximal uh, pull like this could send the same amount of recovery time into your body as, you know, an hour of light climbing. It, it can be that intense on the body. So if you really want to have a, a good peak in your power and your max strength, and that's your sole focus going into this trip, then two times a week, absolutely giving yourself a break every eight sessions, and then giving yourself before this trip, another break from these of about, I want to say, minimum five days to allow the body to completely recover and adapt to everything that you've been doing in the previous um, weeks leading up would, would be yeah. a, a good protocol. It's interesting. I mean, you could talk about how much recovery time you've just built up in your body. That's an interesting way to think about it. And it is like those max pulls just really fire everything. And you've got to make sure that you do have good recovery time. Right. All of the programming I write and all of the coaching I do, that is by far and above the most important aspect for myself and for my climbers to pay attention to is what is the stimulus you're giving your body this session? How intense is it? How long was it? And what is, you know, from your experience, the amount of rest that you need 
so that that is a productive use of your time, not just something you did that was training that now forces you to enter a recovery period. Do you yeah. need two days? Do you need three days? Do you just need one? Was it a short session? It's, it's really understanding the input and then what you need in order for that input to be effective. I call those green days okay. when you get it right. But it's a lot of uh, many people it's, uh, think, and I, you know, I coach a lot of kids and youth teams, and they always want to go climbing because that's how you get stronger or, or train or something. And I, I try to convince them that, no, you need that recovery cycle in there too. Because that's, you, like you said, you break it down. Now you've got to let it build back up and you build back up through rest. And the hardest part is to educating a kid on the fact that not everything is recovering at the same rate because not everything is receiving the same load. So mm. you take a rest day, your fingers might feel great, your arms might feel great, but maybe your knees from doing all those heel hooks are not great and they might need another day. So it's knowing what you did last session and understanding what type of potential do you have in that in all of your different body parts for the next session for it to be productive, destructive, or a complete waste of time. Okay, so you're a coach. How would people get in contact with you? You can always reach out to me through Instagram at charlie46, or you could go on to my website where I also work with Alex Johnson. Uh, that's paradigmclimbing.com. And there we work with uh, climbers from all around the world of all different disciplines, competitors, outdoor climbers, boulders, sport climbers, trad climbers, speed climbers, whatever it is you want to improve. Alex and I have done it all uh, and we have experience in training all of it and are always eager to meet new people and, and have conversations and, and help. That's great. I think that's it. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover. Anything else you want to touch on? I just honestly wanted to say thank you for helping me out with sending me this board and offering the ability to share what I know, but really the educational aspect that comes along with this board, because you can know so much about your your body and different type of hanging protocols and what everything is supposed to look like when you're hanging on, on a board or lifting things off the ground. But having this much data and you know, being a curious climber and using your time while doing this protocol to actually look at the data and learn how to use the data and learn how to make better training sessions yourself has very drastically changed uh, the quality of my my own training as well as a couple clients that I've already had the pleasure of introducing this to. So thank you awesome. for giving me another leg up in my, my training abilities. Awesome. And I appreciate, you know, the fact that you're joining us for this call and contributing routines to us. It's awesome. Um, I'm excited about the future of this because it does. It just brings so much data to you. And if, when we can provide that data for the average user, then then bring in like experts like yourself to help uh, people further their own training. That's going to be awesome.